Heavenly Father, we bless you. We praise you. We thank you, God, for this morning as we come together. Lord God, we thank you that we were able to celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ as Savior. Help us not to push it aside. Help us not to lay it aside. Help us to remember God Almighty. He came with a purpose. I pray that all these celebrations will draw us closer to you in an intimate relationship with you. So we can live with great expectation, expecting the second advent of Jesus Christ. Because he told us he's coming back. So I pray, Lord, that we can lift up our eyes to you and live with great expectation. And I trust this morning again, Lord God, it's your word, it's your people, it's your season. You are in charge. I trust that you will speak through your Holy Spirit. All the honor, all the glory, all the praise belong to you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I hope many of you are breathing a sigh of relief because all your running around is over and now you can refocus and continue to move forward with Jesus closer to your heart. My sermon this morning, I called it The Other Side of Christmas Story. The other side of the Christmas story, because Christmas isn't over yet. As much as many people are already moving on, but still let us enjoy it in one more day before we move forward. The, the announcement of the predicted birth of Christ was fascinating. From Mary to Joseph to all the other people that were waiting for the day. Like Simeon, one of them who waited eagerly for the Lord's birth. The Holy Spirit gave him assurance that he, will, he would not die before that day. Can you imagine? The Holy Spirit says to him, Simon, you're getting old, but you are not going to go home until when you see the Messiah. Amen? So we're going to read the text in Luke 20, chapter 2, verse 27 through 35. It says, that day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the Lord required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, let your servant die in peace. As you have, as you have promised, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He's a light to reveal God to the nations, and he's the glory of your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall and many to rise. He has been set as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of your hearts will be revealed. One of the things that I want to point out to you, the scripture says that I, it says, I have seen God's salvation, which have been prepared for all people. All people have an opportunity to get saved. All people. I wonder how many people knew Simon's hope and laughed and made fun of him um, because he was waiting for something that you can say you didn't, you couldn't see, and you couldn't figure out. Just as the, just like the way people laugh today, today at us because we have faith in Jesus Christ. But Simeon, Simeon, was like a soldier on the guard. He waited all those years patiently, and now it was time for him to be relieved from his watch. Duty, saying to God, I have seen what you promised, so now I can just go. I'm ready to go. I want you to know it's still possible to have intimate relationship with God today, to experience his glory, to experience his power, and to experience his love. He was talking about the promised salvation. The promise of salvation is God's intervention in humankind. 
in our lives. The people at the time, they really understood the meaning of salvation. Today, I think sometimes we struggle to understand it. Why? Because their ancestors were slaved in a, in a different place in Egypt, and they were delivered by the hands of God. So they know what it means to be saved, to be delivered. But we need to know, although we um, don't have this experience, there's something that we have to keep in mind. There is a constant danger that humankind is facing today. It's God's judgment. God's judgment. Not because God is not a loving God. It's God's anger against sin. Because sin destroys um, relationship with God. And it's sin that destroys um, family members. And it's sin that we see today. It's being raised up. And that's why we see such a division. Not only in the United States of America. It's over the entire world. And that's why I have said to you many, many times. Stop looking at what's going on just as a, as a, 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 from an um, intellectual perspective. It's something spiritual. It's evil because Satan knows his days are counting, counted and he's rising up against the people of God. So if, if evil is rising, then we have to refocus. We have to look how we are engaging with God on a deeper level because that's where our strength comes from. So God's anger against sin. What sin? Sin are all actions that violate God's standard, that goes against God's word, including inner thoughts and desires. Because sometimes we think, because it, I carried it in my, in my mind, it's not sin. Yes, including those things. And sin is what keeps humankind hostage for having a relationship with Jesus Christ. As long as a person allows sin to rule in their lives, they will stay separated from God, and that's why God hates sin. Also, it keeps people without spiritual freedom, freedom or hope of a life eternal. Jesus Christ came to pay for our sins. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life, through Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus. Jesus was born to take away sin. This is the other side of the Christmas story. This is the other side of the Christmas story. We have an ugly story. The ugly story is sin is destroying relationship between man and God. And sin is taking people to hell. And we see all the excitement. It's true. All the excitement about celebrating. But Christ, the salvation, he was being celebrated because he came to solve a problem. He came to bring a solution. And if you look today at our society, a lot is about a celebration. But for what are we celebration, celebrating? Why was the joy to the world? Joy to the world because a Savior was born. The Son of God came to take away sin. The Son of God came to set us free. And this is part of the Christmas celebration. But it's being clouded. It's being overlooked with busyness, with money, and all kinds of stuff. And pardon me if you think I'm a little bit too rough. Do you know it's true? We come together to celebrate Christmas. We have dinners. We open presents. And we open gifts. But oftentimes we can look around and you'd say, where is Jesus? Where is he? Does he get any attention? Is he being recognized? Why are we celebrating? So our personal needs, our own desires are taking priority. While it is a moment, I'm not going to say to you, don't celebrate. But it's a moment to think about the Savior and the need of your humanity of salvation. Because today... We have the same problem. We have the same problem today. People are still struggling because of sin and they don't know God. So why spend all the money all the time celebrating all this festivity? And when you die tomorrow, you don't know the Savior. And you don't know why Jesus Christ was born in this world. 
Jesus, being human, he lived a life without sin, and he was able to die in our place. He said something that I always, it's one of, one of my favorite verses. When Jesus Christ talked about himself, that is um, what he came to do. He said in John 10, 18, no one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily. For I have the authority to lay it down when I want to. Also to take it up again. For this is what my Father has commanded me. Have you ever read of any religious leader that can say that? I have the power to, to uh, um, um, lay it down. I have the power to take it up. Jesus is the only leader that died and resurrected. Jesus Christ is the only religious leader that was able to overcome sin. So this is God's gift. The gift of God to humanity. The only thing that you have to do is believe that Christ died for all your sins. Believe in him and you are saved and you have the opportunity to enjoy life eternal. But we don't, like to, we don't like to deal with the ugliness of life. We don't like, like to deal with the ugliness of sin. So we invent things like an example like Christmas tree. We decorate the tree with all these lights. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, we sing to it. But then there, there is a reality that's still in the heart of man. The need of a savior, a redeemer, a deliverer. Church, if our hope was in this world alone, we would be, uh, um, um, what is it? We should feel pity upon ourselves. Looking at what's going on today, around today, if this is what the place where we're going to be forever, it will be sad. Very, very sad. But Jesus has died to give us eternal hope. And my prayer is also that you can arm yourself with this mindset. I don't think sometimes people believe these words. When Jesus said, I have the authority to lay down my life and also to take it up again. So if I have Jesus in my heart that had the authority to lay down his life and take it up again because this is what the Father has commanded, I believe this is the kind of faith that I have that God will protect me, that God will lead me in this world. Jesus said, in this world, we shall have tribulation. But he overcame the world. And sadly enough, I have to say to you, I see too many people that don't believe they can overcome the world like Jesus said. He said it. But in order for us to overcome in this world, we must lift our, our eyes onto God and we must believe that God is able to protect us and God is able to deliver us. But it shouldn't be just something that you say with your lips. It's something that you live on the inside, trusting and believing and confessing. And that's why I'm saying to you, we have to look at what we're saying. Because the what is saying of the, you speak, and now I'm trying to remember, of the abundance of the heart, you know that, okay? So sometimes we have to stop and ask ourselves and to listen to the things that we're talking about, the coronavirus, about the government, about vax, uh, all that stuff. It's true, it's happening. But the more you think about it, the more you talk about it, it brings your spirit down. You have to look at Christmas, why the baby was born, why the angel came to Mary, why the angel came to Joseph, why the angel came to the, to the shepherds, and why Simeon was waiting for the salvation. Oh, search, you and I, we have so much to look forward to because we know there is no power, there is no authority, there is no demon, there is no government, there is no rule, there is no regulation that can stop the children of God because we believe in Jesus. And what did he say? I have the power. 
I have the power to lay it down and take it up again because this is the command of my Father. And, and the Word of God tells us that the same Spirit, oh, the same power, oh, the same presence that resurrected Him from the grave, and that same power abides in you and I. And I'm, I, I feel like saying to you, if the Spirit made the rumble, make the earth shake, I believe today the people of God should be shaking, should be be moving on the inside by the power of the Holy Spirit. My God is too big. My God is too strong. My God is too firm for me to feel intimidated by the, what the devil is trying to tell me. Jesus said, no one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily for you. I have the authority to lay it down when I want to. I'm so glad that I believe in that Jesus Christ that made that statement. He was the untouchable. Hallelujah. Simeon said, he was light to the nations. God's vision for salvation was beyond the Jewish people. Because when you read the Bible, it seems like uh, it, it was, they were only uh, in the center, the focus. They're even being called the apple of God's eye. But through this nation, God had a different plan. The nations were also included. Jesus was the light to reveal God's love to all people, whosoever believes. To all people. And that's why Jesus said in John 8:12. I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you don't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. I am the light of the world. There were days perhaps you read the scripture, you say, oh, man, I, 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 can't, I quite don't get it. If you are not getting it now, pray for God to open your eyes. Because I'm saying to you, it's dark and it's evil. But I'm not telling you for you it's dark and evil for you to go and hide. I'm not saying to you for you to become afraid. I'm saying this to you for to know the reality in which you're living. It's dark. But who do you believe in? Who do you trust in? He said, I'm the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. Even these words make us think and ask ourselves, if you feel like you're walking in darkness, it's a time to analyze your commitment to Jesus Christ. Because he said, if you follow me, you, you won't walk in darkness. And do you know, church, I know, I, know, I know many, many of us can wait, we say, for all this mess to be over. But I'm learning kind of mess like this are the best, uh, 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 the fertile soil for you to grow. It the, is the best bre breeding ground. The best one. Because your faith will grow, you will mature, and you will learn how to trust in God. I mentioned this to you before, and I'm going to repeat it again to you. I got sick with COVID. It was hard. It was difficult. But also I sensed the presence of evil coming around me, trying to bring me down. Do you know what I did? I got up. Maybe you think I was crazy. I got up. I took some anointing oil with me. I anointed my, myself and my house and I prayed in the name of Jesus. Because I said, finally, what I have been preaching about believing for, I have to show. And I'm telling you, the day I pray, I did it. The word of God became reality. The word of God becomes alive when you are in trouble, when you are in darkness, when you are in difficulties, and you surrender yourself to God. And I cannot explain to you the joy 
the joy of the Lord. I was still dealing with my COVID issues, but the, the, the body didn't matter. It's the spirit that mattered because God answered the prayer. I was still sick, but the inner man was being powered by the Holy Spirit. And that's what we need to understand. It's amazing that if you follow Jesus, you don't have to walk in darkness. It doesn't have anything to do with racial issues. It doesn't have anything to do with class, with political status. It doesn't have anything to do whether you're vax or anti-vax. God loves everyone, and that's why he sent Jesus to come to rescue, because one day we'll be with him. This gives hope to all people. Because the Bible tells us in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned. Isn't it crazy? The politics of the world. Hmm? You're good and you're bad. You're better, you're blue, and you're red, and you all this stuff. And, Bible, and God says, I see like a whole group there. Hmm? All have sinned. Hmm? All have sinned. All have the same issue. Has the same problem. When we look at the world today, it has offered us many temporary solutions because none of them can bring light to the soul. Pay attention. Pay attention when you listen to too much news because it brings confusion. And the people that you're listening to, they live in darkness. If you listen to the news, do it as a way to learn more. But watch your spirit. Read the word of God. Be in tune with what God is saying so you won't fall into depression and oppression. Church, church of Jesus Christ, we are not disarmed. The problem is that many of us don't take our weapons. What did we do at the beginning? Pray. Pray for your leaders. Pray for the evil. Pray for the wicked. Pray for the sick. One thing that... Um, <laughs> this is just a little bit of my own cartoonish thing, okay? If you want to see God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit moving back and forth into heaven, hmm, pray. Pray. Now, and this is where we fail so much to seek because so many of people that are born again don't believe in the power of prayer. God desires to glorify His name, God desires to show His power, God desires to brag on you. But so many of us. Don't believe that if you pray, you will see the hand and power of God. Church, we are becoming too cozy. Too cozy with the things that the world has to offer. Too cozy with the lifestyle. Too cozy with the material things. But there's more to life to achieve material things. It's to know the Savior, the Redeemer. The man that came, man and God, to die for sins. The man that even today, the Bible says, is sitting at the right hand of the Father to intervene for you. And God that knows our weakness, God knows that we don't know what to pray. We don't know what to say. Even then, God has given us the Holy Spirit to intercede for us with words that we cannot utter because that's so much God loves us. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ came, a Savior. There was joy to the world. But Simeon is pointing out the, the side that no one is thinking about right now. Because tomorrow or today, they're already in our sales going 50% off. The thing you bought $100 yesterday, tomorrow is going to be $10. Don't you wish you could just rewind the video, bring it back? 
No, I mean so you can pay 10 instead of 100. Isn't it sad? Isn't it sad sometimes you, you, you say, but we just do it. Next year we do the same thing over and over again. The controversial sign. Simeon was thrilled to be in the right place in the right time. To see the baby Jesus. The promise he patiently waited for. Some tradition says Simon saw him shining when the, his parents were holding him. They were amazed. Mary and Joseph were amazed and more people knew about Jesus. And he blessed them. And then he turned. Uh, <laughs> he blessed them. Then he turned aside to Jesus' mission. It's true that his birth was a, a news of great joy to all people. Then he stated the other side of the Christmas story. So until this point, it was about joy, the baby coming, a savior, excitement, and all that stuff. Then Simon turns to Mary in Luke chapter 2, 25 through 35. No, it's only 25. Is the message, by the way. He says to Mary... This child, this baby, marks both the failure and the recovery of many in Israel. A figure misunderstood and contradicted. The pain of a sword will thr thrust through you. But the rejection will force honesty as God reveals who they really are. We know the Savior was rejected and he died on the cross for our sins. So this beautiful baby end up becoming, end up being rejected, end up challenging people what they think, where they're standing to reveal. Because when you, if you um, um, believe in Christ, you'll follow him. If you don't, automatically you will reject him. Throughout history, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, claiming exclusivity. He's the only one. And that's why I'm telling you, Christians are hated. Because we claim exclusivity. We claim God is the only one. And more and more, this hatred is rising up today in our society. You may say it, some is political, but the truth is, let's look at the truth. Jesus was rejected in our society today. There is a hatred rising against Christianity. Why? Do you know why? We are people of the kingdom. We live, let me say this, we live by a different rule. We live by a different government. That's why communists must eradicate Christians. Because they don't want an, an, another ideology. Because they cannot control what you think. And today we see uh, the challenge. I was just reading a, a case that supposed, supposedly is going to go to court soon, I think 2020, 2022, of a lady. She is, a, um, she is an artist, and now they tell her that she has to be able to create anything for anybody. She, her belief doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. So the government will tell you what to think what to live, and what to do. There are moments while you have, to, you have to pray, you have to submit to them. But when it comes to your faith, you have to stand up and rise up like an eagle and stick with what you believe. I want you to know, but standing up, remember too, standing up for your faith may have dire consequences. You may lose a lot, but then you have to make a decision whether you believe in Christ or not. I know here in America, for many, many years, we had a very, again, I'm going to repeat the same word, cozy gospel. Isn't it? It's about praying and God will bless you. Praying God will give you money. Praying God will give you car. Praying God will give you all this stuff. But we see that the gospel isn't as welcoming no more. We see that you and I are becoming a, a controversial point. In our society. Why? Because we have Jesus in us. And the same Jesus that was rejected then 
will be rejected in you today when you represent him. And remember, because they rejected him, they took him to the cross. It's only by God's power, my church, we'll be able to withstand and stand firm in these days in which we're living. And that's why we have to pray. And that's why we have to see God. It's true we can use a legal system that forced many, many things. But it's an evil system which is high above what we see and what we think. For many, the enemy, I'm not going to say these things to you to discourage you, is the reality. Some people get hear all this stuff and they sit and they complain. That's wrong. You hear all this stuff and you rise up. Yesterday in a conversation, this wasn't planned, a conversation with my grandson. My son, my son says to him, oh, do you know your uncle, your, your uncle, um, do, can you beat your uncle? Because his uncle is, is bigger than him. He's in his 20s. Do you know what he turns around and says to him? I can beat him. <laughs> because David defeated Goliath. Huh? Children church works. David defeated Goliath. What do you think? Hmm? Do you see Goliath rising? Remember, for 40 days, 40 nights, Goliath was screaming, yelling, going back and forth. And there was a, a man that had the gods to come and face him. But this young kid, young lad, 4.5 feet tall, came, and he saw the giant. He said, what's going on here? How come you guys aren't doing anything about this? This man comes and talks like this about my God? For, for David's stature, didn't matter. And for us, the increasing oppression shouldn't matter either. Because we serve our almighty God. And David retrieved, and the king says to him, let me give you my, 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 my weapons to fight. He said, these things, don't, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. Let me go to what I, I, I normally use. Weapons of the world doesn't work for us. Let me go to my knees. Let me talk to my almighty father. Let me talk to the one that gave me the promise. He will fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me go talk to the one that says greater things that you will do in my name. We claim all the time he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And church, I'm believing that today more than ever because if God says it, it has to be so. It has to be true, and I'm expecting it. And if he doesn't do it, it's his problem. Because he said it. Am I right? He said it. I'm not afraid. No lightning is going to hit me, smack me over the head right now either. What is... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then he looks 35 years ahead. He said, Mary... A sword will trust through you when you will watch your son suffering and die and die on the cross. Church, this is the other side of the Christmas story. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1.23, So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended and the Gentiles say, it's all nonsense. There will be always division. There will be always people that will take another side. Because some will believe and some will not. The Christmas story is a beautiful story. But we have to keep in mind the reality of it. The reality is that men is in need of God. Our family members. Our neighbors. Co-workers, our enemies, they are in need of Jesus Christ. And when you came to know Christ as Savior 
and Christ has come and lived in your life, God has commanded you to carry this message in the darkness today. So don't let us hide. Pray that God will give you the boldness to live the life that you are professing. And also realize that because you believe in Jesus Christ as Savior, you will be pushed aside. People will, you won't be welcome in many, many places no more. But remember, this is not our, our world. Now, Simeon lived with dedication, commitment. Because he was waiting for the salvation. And today, the church of Jesus Christ, in the midst of all what we see, has a great hope. The hope that the baby Jesus is coming back as Lord and King. And every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. And this is the God in whom we are believing. My words to you is be patient. Don't give up. Keep seeking the face of God. The Holy Spirit is present and is ministering to you. The Holy Spirit is in this place when you read your Bible. I've learned over the years, I can call you, I can twist your arm, I can knock you over the head. You will come up front here and you will do everything I want to say. And I will go home so happy because I can tell my friends, 20 people came to the altar. Then my pride kicks in. But I'm learning. I preach the word of God and God does the conviction. And I believe with my entire heart. Like the Bible says, that his word will not return void. It will accomplish his purpose. But the only way, it, well, it accomplishes purpose because it reaches the heart. But for you to receive the blessing or the harvest, you have to obey and submit your heart to him. So as you listen to him today, even online and in here, may you choose to apply what God has said today in your life because the days aren't getting any better. But I want you to know there's joy when you can excel and grow in Christ Jesus. Do you know prayer is not only about asking. Prayer is about fellowship, relationship. Be filled with the presence and power of God. There are some things in this life that can, we cannot find satisfaction in whatsoever we do. Some things you can only find the joy and peace when you're in the arms of the Father. And God desires to hug you. And the hope that you can find. Amen. We're going to pray. And some of you have to give God thanks for me. Do you know why? No, it's 11.19 and I'm done. <laughs> yes. I pay attention. I hear what you say. So we're going to pray. Dear Lord, we bless you. We honor you. And we praise you. Father, we trust that your word spoken today one more time went forth and it's accomplishing its purpose in hearts and mind both present and online God we trust that your conviction of the Holy Spirit laid upon our hearts that we can respond to you Lord God in the name of Jesus 
as you're calling to draw closer to you. Like we're singing before, I surrender all. Would you stand with me? I'm going to invite you in your heart to respond, not to Pastor Sikwi's voice, but the voice of conviction that you have heard. And make a decision today and step out in your own walk in all your relationship with Jesus Christ. And remember the other side of the Christmas story is as good as, as the, the, the first side. Because unless he was born, he would have never died. He was born for our salvation. Heavenly Father, as we respond to your conviction today, I pray for strength. I pray for wisdom. I pray, Lord God Almighty, you strengthen us in our relationship with you. Father, I pray that as a result of these answers, there will be a harvest. A harvest for the honor and glory of, of your name. Father God, I trust that you will take us above intellectual thinking and imagination. And thank us, God, in a spiritual realm. Because your word says we should worship you in spirit and in truth. May by your grace and mercy we lay aside all excuses. May we find forgiveness again in you as we confess our sins so you can come and transform our lives for the glory of your name. God, I hear your voice. I hear you calling. Even today, you need men and women that are willing to surrender all to you to be light in the darkness. God is calling today. God is calling today. I can hear the voice. God is calling today. God is calling you. God is calling you. Are you going to say yes? Are you going to say yes to the ministry, to the giving of your life, of your time, of your weakness? I think it's funny that um. The, we, oftentimes we, we claim I'm weak. The, the Apostle Paul said, when I'm weak, I, I've learned to glorify God in my infirmities. He said, oh, when I'm weak, I'm strong. So do you have infirmities? Do you have a, a place in your life that's hollow? You say, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't. Well, let me tell you, you are the right candidate. Come and surrender all to him. God bless you today.